Hi guys, I'm here with Dr. Sibamani. He just gave us an excellent presentation all about probiotics, prebiotics, and we have some a couple questions for you if that's okay. Of course. So when we have a patient in our practice, when should we consider doing gut testing? Yeah, you know, this is a really good question. Gut testing hasn't been something that we do generally in dermatology. Right. However, uh, gut testing, there's never a situation where you wouldn't want to do gut testing because gut testing, you can learn a lot about a patient's microbiota makeup in their gut. And that can tell you about their inflammatory state, whether they're eating good foods. Right. Is there something that's off with their diet or perhaps even something that they can incorporate to help improve their gut? So technically you could do gut testing on everyone. I tend to do it on people that come in and want a little bit deeper dive. Mm -hmm. Like if they have psoriasis, acne, rosacea, and they're like, I want to get a little bit more information about the status of my gut health. Then they tell them the role of gut testing. So I don't reflex gut testing on everyone, but technically you could do it on anyone. I love that. Talk to me a little bit about spore-based probiotics. Yeah, so probiotics are an amazing landscape of uh, just this new technology that's out there. There are non-spore and spore. And the difference is that non-spore are the ones that you take and they don't really have any sort of suspended state. They're just bacteria. Most of them actually arrive into the gut dead because they have to get through the, the gastric acid and the bile acids. Now spores are really interesting. They're like in a suspended animated state because what's happened is they're used to being in a harsh environment and they just kind of get into this little cocoon clam and they up spore. A bit. Yeah, they clam up and they become a spore. And when they get in, they're resistant to the gastric acids, resistant to the bile acids. And so when they get into the gut, then they see that, okay, this is a nice, warm, loving environment. And then they germinate and then they take hold. And then as they go down the colon, they say, oh, it's not so loving and warm and nice anymore. And then they it's become a spore here. again. So that's how it works. That's very helpful. Talk to me a little bit about where you see gut health in dermatology in the future. I think it should end up becoming a core of how we approach dermatology. If you look at other fields that are out there, Ayurvedic medicine, naturopathic medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, a lot of traditional fields, they've always talked about the gut being one of the really important aspects of your general health. The second brain. Yeah, it is the second brain and might even be the first brain and your <laughs> brain's actually the second brain. And the reason is a lot of what we eat and a lot of the makeup of the bacteria there, not just the bacteria, the fungi, the yeast, they drive inflammation into the general system or they drive good, what we call secondary metabolites that can then affect a lot of inflammatory conditions like acne, rosacea, hydratinitis separativa, psoriasis. So I think having that conversation around nutrition, which is where we're a lot, well, there's a lot of comfort there, but now understanding that how you treat your gut and how your gut microbiota treat you is an interplay. So I actually think gut testing is going to become a big thing. I think gut health is going to be a big thing, especially in the inflammatory space. I have a personal question for you. Yeah. That was not on our pre-approved <laughs> list, of but course. tell me, what did you, what do you eat in a day? What's your breakfast? What's your typical diet like? Yeah. You know, in my particular case, I am plant-based mm -hmm. and I'm, uh, I, I guess you could say it's vegan, uh, but in, in, I don't, I don't, I'm not against eating eggs or anything like that, but I tend to really focus in on those foods that are not too processed. I try to eat whole foods as much as possible. So in the morning, it'd be oatmeal. And um, I do like steel cut oatmeal. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to put in some natural sweeteners in there and then some fruits. Um, if it comes to lunchtime, if I can do it, I like to have something that was cooked. So I love the squashes. I have a certain body type. In Ayurvedic medicine, we all have certain body types. And so I have a body type that requires much more what we call earthy foods. Mm -hmm. So I'll eat more pumpkins and I'll eat more squashes, try to get in as much protein as I can. And then for dinner, I try to keep it a little bit lighter because the last thing I need is super heavy. I get carbs in there too, though. I'm not a big fan of this no carb diet. I think it should be uh, the, just, the just right carb diet. So, I love it. Well, yeah. thanks for letting us into your day too. Of course. Thanks for being here to Elevate. We appreciate it.